Right, Steve Hartridge, Editorial Director at Selling Travel. I'm delighted to be talking today to Tony Roberts, who's Vice President UK and Europe for Princess Cruises. And even more delighted, Tony, that we're speaking aboard the Regal Princess. Yeah, fantastic to have you here, Steve. And, uh Welcome on board. You must be delighted to uh, not only be sailing again, but to see this ship so busy with 2,800 people having a great time. Absolutely. You know, after uh, the years that we've, the last couple of years that we've had, and um, the ships being on our voluntary pause, and finally bringing them back into service this summer, it is it's fantastic to welcome guests back on board, um, and amazing to have seen the popularity of the UK sailings this summer. And, we're, as you say, we're on uh, the last cruise now, which is about 75% full, um, which is the capacity that we've been selling up to. So it's a sellout. Uh, and we're, um, we're, we're very excited to have guests back on board and having a, a fabulous time. 2021 has obviously been a difficult year and let's, let's look forward in a second, but just sort of sum up what, what your role is involved in 2021. Yeah, so, um, in 2021, really, we've been focused around how uh, we work with government to uh, identify the way that we're, we're going to return to sailing. So the early part of the year was very much focused on you know, what was the return to, going to look like, um, which protocols and rules would we have in place, and how would we manage that. And around March time, uh, we came to an agreement with, with various parties in government. We then uh, put our selection of summer seacations on sale uh, at the end of March and uh, started to operate those from the end of July. So it's really been a, a case of you know, the rebirth of the industry. Um, and But we've also created a completely new product, which was sailing with UK guests around the UK. And some of those cruises not even calling at ports of call. So from a sales and marketing perspective, we've, we've created a whole new product, taken it to market, filled it, and executed it all in the space of six months. So it's been a, uh, a challenging year. Do you think some of those some of those new cruises that you've introduced this year will will you be looking at that in the future, or do you think that was just a one-off to fit the circumstances this year? So it was definitely a unique situation. But but one thing that's been really clear with it is it's been fantastic to get people to try a cruise for the first time. And we've had a lot of people who've never sailed with Princess before, or never sailed on. Uh, on a cruise ship before, trying these short breaks from Southampton um, and really enjoying uh, the experience, but also getting a great understanding for what great value for money cruising is. Um, going forward, we'd actually already published our 2022 and 2023 mm. programs, so we don't have those short sailings, but um, having seen the success of this year, it's certainly something we'd consider in the future. Let's talk about next year. Uh, wh what can Princess passengers look forward to? What, what, what can you tell us about perhaps new routes, new itineraries, new innovations? So next year is, um, you know, we've got a couple of new ships or ships that never had guests on, uh, on board starting. So we took delivery of Enchanted Princess back in September, but she's never operated with guests on board um, and she's starting up within the next few weeks. And then early in next year, we have Discovery Princess joining the fleet. So uh, around the end of March, Discovery Princess will be um, starting sailing around California. Uh, so we're very excited to be introducing new ships and new capacity coming in um, and guests can look forward to that great princess experience but on the, the newest ships within the line. Um, and really what I'm looking forward to in 2022 is getting back to operating those international itineraries that we know our guests love. So giving our guests opportunities to go to the west coast of the US and to Alaska and um, returning to Australia uh, returning to Japan and to Asia um, and you know, starting cruising around South America too because you know that's one of the areas where Princess has really excelled is in giving UK guests an opportunity to go to those real bucket list destinations and enjoy a, a truly uh, fantastic destination break away. And how are bookings looking for next year? So really positive so far we've got um, I think 22 is, is at an advantage in a way because we had uh, you know, lots of sailings from 2020 and 2021 had to be cancelled yeah. and many of those guests have booked into future years. So there's a lot of, you know, there's a, a hardcore of guests who are looking forward to returning to the cruises that they had planned for the last two years. Um, but we're also seeing really strong demand. I think the one thing I would say though is that it's very focused right now on closer to home. So we're seeing mm -hmm. really strong demand for ex-UK sailings from Southampton and we're seeing really strong demand for European sailings. 
and it's not really until 2020, late 22 and into 2023 that we're seeing that stronger demand for the long haul destinations. Okay. So a bit of a transition to come. But only today uh, you, you announced a great deal on European sailings for next for next year. Yes. Uh, is that something that is still going to sort of dominate the market? Some good prices? Some. I think so. The, the phenomenon in Europe is that we have a we have a number of trades, um, and you know the, you're mentioning the the Baltic cruises from mm. Copenhagen, where we we've just put out some revised pricing today. Um, that's a trade that would typically be booked by North Americans, Australians and UK guests. So all of our core markets for Princess, but would be heavily weighted towards North Americans. And we're seeing, as I've mentioned already, you know, the, the Europeans are staying in Europe and the North Americans are also staying in North America. So we're just readjusting where in the world we're, we're planning to source those guests from. So there's a huge growth opportunity uh, for selling UK guests, European destinations that would usually have been very strong for North Americans. So Mediterranean is one, um, Scandinavia is another, and we've seen huge demand for British Isles off the back of the Cations, but also the fact that guests are very happy to stay um, very close to home and to stay mm. within the UK for their holiday next summer as well. I mean, you, you had some great deals this year on cruises, this, this cruise particularly to Rotterdam, Southampton. Will they be around next year? I think there's always an opportunity for there to be good deals, um, but I think they're going to be harder to find next year because the demand, particularly for the savings from Southampton, has been so strong. Um, I mean, you know, we would normally do quite strong deals in Black Friday, for instance, and we're, we're taking a long, hard look at the cruises that we include and... Um, you know, the, the level of discounting that we need to do on those. So, but there's always a deal to be had. And, um, you know, I, th I think we'll see a mixture of that. We'll see average selling prices going up, but I think um, there'll still be there'll still be some deals to have, particularly for some of that fly European product. I think that's going to be quite keenly priced. We've got travel agents on board with us on this cruise. I mean, that's surely a sign that agents and the trade will remain as important to you as previously absolutely you know we couldn't have got through the last 18 months without the support that we've had with our trade partners um, our strategy at princess is to work in a win-win way uh, with our trade partners and we have a very very productive and long-lasting relationship and, and our our belief is that it absolutely is one of our strengths um, to work in the way that we do with the trade and they're critically important to our future success as well so um, you know, more than ever the last year has taught us how to to rely on our partners and also how to support our partners and that's definitely um, you know, part of our ethos going forward. Okay, I won't ask you to say your favourite Princess Cruise but is there a cruise that you've taken that has left an indelible memory and experience that you've had perhaps? Yeah I think so the one that, that sticks out for me is I travelled on Sapphire Princess out of Singapore um, with my family over Christmas and we visited Borneo, um, Vietnam, Cambodia, uh, Thailand uh, and did a, had a fantastic time um, you know, visiting these countries and doing so with in sort of luxury and safety as well it's probably not a family holiday i would have done if i'd been doing it independently and that really was you know has some very special memories for me uh, in terms of not just the places i visited but doing that at christmas and doing it with you know three generations of the robertses on board the ship nice. oh thanks tony and thanks for inviting me on the, Absolutely. On the cruise. it's been wonderful having you thank you Cheers. Thanks.